Monster Hunter World is the first major rehaul of the series, which has been around since 2004. Yes, each iteration has added something new, like more Monster weapon types and monsters, and even new mechanics like mounting, but nothing has looked as noticeably different as World does. As an HR20 Monster Hunter from the original, I was a little apprehensive seeing these changes, as I'm sure many are. I love Monster Hunter entirely, but to be honest, a makeover wouldn't hurt. I want the core feeling of Monster Hunter to be intact, like the deliberate combat and intense crafting, but would absolutely welcome a more streamlined multiplayer and more open world. On the other hand, I had never played a Monster Hunter before getting my hands on World. The series always looked like something right up my alley, but I've never been much of a handheld gamer, so I was excited to get the opportunity to finally jump in. Fortunately, it's exactly what I was hoping for. Now, if you're new to Monster Hunter like me, I'm happy to say Monster Hunter World handles excellently. Movement and combat are similar to an action RPG, and if you're familiar with the Soul series or Bloodborne, you definitely find enough similarities to get you started. In fact, in the first 10 minutes, I was already running through the massive map, dodging and stringing together light and heavy attacks to take down monsters relatively quickly. I've heard in the past the series has had a steep learning curve when it comes to controls, but I'm happy to report that I didn't have any problems whatsoever. Yeah, and that applies to veteran hunters as well. Those combos you're familiar with from previous Monster Hunter games are still there too, with some added flair. There are a few new combos to find with your favorite weapons, which is great, and overall it feels a little faster and smoother. It's also more responsive as well. In past games, I barely blocked with a clunky greatsword, but in World, I could better rely on my character actually getting the movement done in time, and it didn't impede my movement afterward as much either. And that's actually what I really liked about the weapons in Monster Hunter, is that each weapon class behaved differently. I spent the majority of my time using the quick dual blades that didn't actually have a block function, but instead powered up my hunter with this crazy demon mode buff that drained stamina at the cost of more damage. Now later on I swapped to a light bow gun, firing volleys of different ammo at monsters from a safe distance, which was a totally different experience than the up close and personal dual blade style I was using for the majority of the hunt. It's actually really nice to use ranged weaponry, since, you know, many action RPGs focus on melee. I was really enjoying the variety in the playstyles I found in Monster Hunter World. And one of the biggest changes in World is how you actually track a monster. It's much easier with the addition of scout flies. In past Monster Hunters, you'd actually have to memorize the movement patterns of every monster to find them at the start of the mission. And if you lack the items or skills necessary, you're basically wandering around the map. And then you even had to use an item called a paintball to even keep them on your map afterwards. But this lack of an obvious path did enable veterans to really shine and take on a mentor role to new players though, which is an aspect of Monster Hunter I've always really liked. The four members of our party absolutely rocked this strange T-Rex bird monster thing that we were tracking down. It's called an Antinath. Whatever it's called, each one of us took on a role. I was the nimble damage dealer, Casey was the tanky warrior, we had a bard whose club also played songs, awesomely enough, that buffed us during the hunt, and we had a long-range gunner that peppered the monster with bullets all fight long. Playing with other hunters seems like it's always been a crux of the series, but I really enjoyed putting together tactics on the fly with people I had just met. That is, except when Casey started swinging her sword like a massive tornado and accidentally sent me sailing into the air. It's a fun feature. Sure, the great sword can launch everyone on accident, but its backswing can also be used to send party members directly onto a monster's back if we get the timing down. Plus, it's an amusing way to pass the time while waiting for the party to prepare for a hunt. So, aside from the fact that the game looks really, really good, the other thing that I loved right off the bat was how much environmental interaction was dotted all over the map. At one point, I used my slinger, which is kind of like a slingshot, to knock some fruit off a vine, which crackled when it burst onto the floor. And that attracted a horde of little dinosaur creatures that I then unceremoniously murdered. But there's so much more around that you're capable of interacting with. Like vines to swing on and flowers to hit that's spew healing powder when you need a quick pick-me-up. At one point we were even able to lead our big monster into a sand pit where it got stuck and then we were able to beat on it mercilessly. And then there's the webs of vines to entangle beasts or pitfalls and cliffs and all kinds of obstacles that change a fight on the fly. Not to mention all the other monsters that can spontaneously interact with one another. I can see parties formulating super unique strategies to take down monsters as fast as possible by using environmental hazards, like placing a pitfall trap below a swinging vine, letting a teammate easily mount and hack away at a monster from above. Or jumping on their back and riding them. Yeah. And that's why I'm really excited to get back into World. We only played a tiny portion of one level on one map, and we got kicked off our demo before we could even get into the crafting from all the monster parts we harvested. Now, judging by the fact my hunter was wearing what I can only describe as a frog raincoat, I'm guessing there's a ton of options and possibilities when it comes to that hardcore role-playing progression. 
I was familiar with a lot of the items we gathered and weapons we used, so I definitely expect that same amazing hunt, collect, craft loop from the past, just with some quality of life improvements. You no longer have to worry about eating before heading off with a quest, since you can now order stat boosting meals straight from the camp. And the same can even be said about weapons and armor, which could be switched out from camp in the middle of a hunt. Even collecting stuff is more seamless, as you can collect and walk at the same time, so you won't hinder teammates' pace by collecting some honey on the way to your big monster hunt. I don't understand anything that you're saying right now, but I think it's awesome, right? There's so much in this game, and just from the 30 minutes we played together, I can already tell Monster Hunter World is right up my alley. I'm definitely looking forward to tracking down and killing some more monsters. From what I can tell, everything I really liked about Monster Hunter is still present in Monster Hunter World with some aspects improved and others simplified, with the most important aspects generally the same, like barbecuing. Monster Hunter World is headed for an early 2018 launch date, but for much more on Monster Hunter from now until then, keep it right here on IGN. Nice! That looks so tasty!